Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan from Titans of CNC. Woo! Today we are going to do another Titan trilogy. We're going to design, we're going to program, and we're going to CNC machine another project from the Titans of CNC Academy. So the whole thing here is to make complicated easy. One of the things that we've done is actually create the prints, put them on our academy, so you at home can download the prints and follow along on your computer as you watch the video. Go to the projects on the academy, go to building blocks, and then go to Titan 8M. You're gonna see the PDF prints. Go ahead and download those and then start this video. And together, we're gonna make this happen. So we created the print and dissected it into three different sheets. On the first sheet, you see the overall profile of the binoculars. One of the reasons that I wanted to do the binoculars was just to have a really cool shape. This part is not extremely difficult, but it can be intimidating for those without experience because of all the radiuses and the unique shape. On this first print, we have the dimensions for the outside profile. Print number two, we have the dimensions for the pockets and the through holes with the chamfers. And then on the third print, we actually are bringing in something new. And that is to do a radial O-ring groove that's submerged inside the pocket. So when programming it, we're gonna have to drop down inside the pocket and move into the material and profile it. So let's start drawing, let's start designing. So we have three circles right here. So it's a binocular, but you really have to see past the binocular shape and see what shapes are in play and how can I draw and dimension this the quickest. I'm going to show you a little trick, okay? So I'm looking at the center point. So I'm going to concentrate on this center point, then I'll do the bigger diameter, and then I can see right here some joining material that's 400 thousandths thick. But I see that the center runs from diameter to diameter, and that's what makes this part actually easy to design. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start a sketch. I'm just going to say create sketch. Boom! There's my sketch plane. This is my center. When I look at my drawing, I see my center right here, the center point of my binoculars, this 0.787 diameter. I'm going to put that right on the center. Knowing that there's a relationship between this diameter and this diameter, I'm going to go ahead and lay the groundwork to make it all happen. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a couple of construction lines. These are necessary for placement of my diameters. So in creating a line, I can click line right up here on my toolbar, or I can use the drop down menu. But what I'm actually gonna do is a shortcut. I'm just gonna hit L, nice and easy, for line. I'm gonna hit the center on my construction plane, and I'm going to drop down at 90 degrees, perfect. I'm gonna come over here now and look at the dimension between the center of this diameter and the center of this diameter, and it is 0.582. So I'm just gonna put 0.582, enter, and it created the line. The next line that I want is from the center of the small diameter to the center of the bigger diameter going in X. So I'm actually going to hit line again L. When I bring my cursor over, it's going to actually click on the point. I'm going to stretch the line out. I'm at a perfect 180 degrees, so I know it's perfect. I'm going to put the dimension called out right here, so it's 1.750. So I'm going to put 1.750. I'm going to hit enter. I have a line coming down at 582, a line going out at 1.75. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create my diameters. So you can go up to circle up here in your toolbar. You can also use the drop down and come down to circle. Or you can just simply hit C for circle. And I'm going to click the center point, pull, brings up my dimension box. And I'm going to copy this dimension right here, 0.787, enter. 
Now I'm going to hit circle again. I'm going to click the end of this construction line. It snaps in place. Click, pull, and I can see that right here, it's actually calling out a diameter of 1.95. I still have my dimension box. I'm going to hit 1.95, enter. I got my smaller diameter and I got my bigger diameter. Now that I'm here and I can see that there's more diameters in play, I'm going to go ahead and create those diameters now to save time. So I see a 1.380 diameter that's inside. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click circle. I'm going to click the exact same center point, pull that out. I'm going to go 1.38, enter. I have another diameter, 0.550, that's going right through the part. So I'm going to hit circle again, click the center point, pull it, 0.55, enter. So it looks like all the diameters are in place. But because I studied the print before I started, I know that there's a hidden diameter here. It's the O-ring groove that I talked to you about. So this is cool. I'm going to show you how to easily draw an O-ring groove submerged inside the pocket in a radial form. So the diameter is 1.6. So for right now, I'm just going to click another circle. I actually have to click my construction view to show the computer that I'm back over here diameter, hit the center, pull, 1.6, boom. All right, now we have all our circles. Remember when I started, I said there's a relationship between this diameter and this diameter, and it's this connection point right here. To connect the small diameter with the big diameter, we're just going to simply create a line from center point to center point. Then we'll offset that line, 0.200 and 0.200, equaling 0.400, which is the exact dimension given right here for the width of that connecting point. I'm going to hit the center point of this circle. I can see that it's snapped in place. I'm going to stretch it. I can come down. You can see the degree moves right here, but then I'm going to snap it right there. So you can see it just kind of like places itself. Boom. Now it's in place. So something happened right now and it's a cool opportunity to teach you something else. I created the line from center point to center point and when I did it, it actually closed this area and created this weird kind of backwards triangle. And you can see it's shaded. Why did it do that? It did it because of my initial hard lines. So an easy way to fix that, since those hard lines, those initial lines were just the foundation and they're not actually part of the end product, I'm actually going to take those hard lines and I'm going to turn them back into construction lines. And I do that simply by clicking one of the lines. I come up here to where it says normal and construction and I click it and it just turned into a dotted line. So now I just come down here and I click this guy and I hit it again and boom, I got nice dotted lines down here that basically will disappear later. I have my initial line from center to center and I need to turn that into a width of 0.400. So I'm going to hit O for offset. So if you don't have offset up top, you can do a drop down or simply hit O for offset, you can click this line right here and instantly it gives you a dimension box. So I'm going to go 0.4, so I'm going to go half of that, which is 0.2. I'm going to click 0.2, enter, boom, it gives me another line. So I'm going to hit O again for offset, O, click this line again. Now, since the other one was positive, I'm going to go negative negative 0.2. It shows me in red where the line's about to go. I'm going to hit enter and right now everything looks perfect. Okay. One of the center lines right here, I'm actually going to change that back into a construction line, this guy right here. So I'm going to click it, come back over here, click construction and look, we're halfway there. 
I know some of you guys are thinking, why do you just concentrate on one side? I concentrated on one side because I knew I was going to teach you guys how to mirror it. So instead of clicking a whole bunch of diameters on this side and this side, I concentrated on one area so I could simply come up here, hit my drop down, hit mirror. I'm going to click this circle, I'm going to click this circle, click the center circle because I want each one of those to mirror to the other side. I'm also going to click this line and click this line right here. And then I'm going to come down and it's asking mirror line. So basically when you say mirror line, it's asking you to select a center point. So everything on this side or this side, whichever side you're doing, will be mirrored to the opposite side. Okay, so I clicked everything on this side. So I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to come down to my initial construction line, this bad boy right here. And there you go. All the lines that I clicked magically appeared on the opposite side. So because I agree, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say, OK. So everything looks good. I'm going to come over back over here. I'm actually going to right click on the drawing that I created. The area that I clicked immediately turns blue. And I can see press pull. That's the magic button. So I'm going to click press pull. Now, anything I click is going to be extruded into a 3D model. So I'm simply going to go through the steps of clicking each area. So I'm going to click this area. I'm going to click this area, this area, this area, this area. That side's done. Center, this, this, this guy, back over here, back over here, back over here. Diameter, diameter, diameter. Everything's clicked except two of the smaller diameters. Why did I not select those? I didn't select those because later on, you're going to have through holes. So to save time, I'm just going to extrude everything but that, which is going to automatically make my through holes. Because I'm always thinking ahead. Time is money. We want to get this model done as quick as possible. That's why I, I mirrored it, and that's why I'm not extruding those holes. So what's the thickness of the part? It's 0.750. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to put negative 0.750 to extrude back. I'm going to hit enter, and now I'm going to see if it worked. Woo, look at that. I got a solid model. I got to fly it around. Boom. All right, so it's almost there. It looks pretty good. What is the major thing that I'm missing besides the different diameters that I already drew? It's the big radiuses in all the different corners. So I'm going to come back over to my drawing. I'm going to backtrack to the second drawing. I'm going to look for that radius, and I see it right there. Radius, 0.375. And I can see everywhere it's placed right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put those radiuses in right now. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to hit modify, hit the drop down, come down to fillet, fillet radius, same thing. Remember from my previous Titan trilogies, you can actually see right through the model. So I'm just going to click here. It gives me my dimension box. I'm actually going to click over here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to come down here, click that guy. I can't really see it, so I'm going to flip this around a little bit. I'm going to click this line, come back over to this line, coming to this line, and back to this line. Now I have all eight locations dialed. I'm just going to put 0.375, enter, and there you go. It's looking better. But I lost all my dimensions up here, all my diameters that I drew in. is just hidden. So I'm going to come up here to sketches. I'm going to hit this bad boy. Boom. 
and see right here, see that light bulb? I'm just gonna turn that light bulb on. I'm gonna turn it on. Boom, let there be light. Now I got my diameters back. Let's finish this model. All right, so one of the major things with the part is the pockets. Okay, so let's do the pockets first. So I'm gonna extrude in a negative direction. I'm going to right click on the area that I wanna extrude. Right click, press pull. Now I'm gonna click this guy right here. I'm gonna come back over to the other side now. Click this guy, click this guy. I'm gonna look at my dimensions. It says 0.500 deep. So I'm gonna go negative 0.5, enter. There you go, the pockets are in place. All right, so now this is where it gets a little trick, okay? So I have my O-ring groove. Let's go look for the O-ring groove. It's on page three. Here's our dotted lines going around. 1.6 diameter. I already got the diameter in play because I drew the circle. So now I'm going to come back to the diameter of this O-ring. I'm going to right click it, hit press pull. I'm going to click this side, this side, and this side. Now everything that I want to pull down is selected. I'm going to come up here and see where it says start profile plane. I'm actually going to drop this to offset. So I'm going to offset the plane that I'm going to start the cut. I'm going to look at my drawing. I'm going to look at the O-ring groove right here and I can see that the O-ring groove is submerged in the part with a bottom depth of 0.225. So I'm gonna click offset, and right here I'm just gonna put negative 0.225 because I'm submerging down into it. I'm going to tab down. Now the starting point is submerged at negative 0.225. So I wanna create an opening inside the part. So because I went negative, 0.225, I'm going to look over here and I'm going to look at the width of my O-ring and it says 0.125, so an eighth of an inch. I went down into the part, negative 0.225, that's my bottom. Now I'm going to come up. So because I'm down inside it, I'm going to put a positive 0.125 and it automatically shows me my groove. It looks good. But just to double check it, I'm just going to say, looks good, okay, boom, I'm going to rotate it, and there you go. Check it out, check it out. Woo-hoo! O-ring groove, nice and submerged perfectly. The model is basically complete at this point. The only thing missing is the 50,000 chamfer down on the inside here. So I'm going to go to a different print where they actually call it out. And it says 50 thousandths chamfer. It's a 45 degree chamfer. And if you look at the notes, it says break all edges 10 thousandths. The reason that I didn't draw it into the model is because later on the CNC machine and when I program the job, I'm actually going to just take a 45 degree chamfer, 90 included, I'm going to drop it down on the edge, I'm going to profile it to create that 10,000 chamfer, and I'm going to drop it down to create the 50,000 chamfer. So I'm not going to draw the chamfer now because time is money. All right, I see a lot of the lines here, right, from when I created the sketch. So I'm going to go back over here, I'm just going to turn off that light bulb. Ah. And there it is. It is time for programming. I will see you in video number two of this trilogy. Boom.